Well, joining me now on set is Turkey's former Minister for EU Affairs, Egemen Baş. In New York, we have Kostas Panayotakis. He's an author and sociology professor at City University of New York. And from the, the University of Nottingham is European and public law professor Aris Georgopoulos. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Egemen Baş, let's begin with you. Why are you not happy with the way the Greek courts have ruled? Greece has been a victim of military coup attempts in the past. They know how it feels when your democracy is attacked. Turkey went through a huge trauma on July 15th of 2016. Our ally, our neighbor, Greece, should not be harboring these terrorists who are responsible for more than 250 lives. They Just like they, they returned the so helicopter that they escaped right. with. When you say terrorists, have, it sounds as if you're convinced that they're terrorists already. I and am 100% right. convinced that they're terrorists. They killed people. They attacked people. They uh, used live ammunition to kill civilians. And more than 250 people died to protect their democracy, their stability, and their country's integrity that night. Right. What do you call those who kill civilian people? They are cold-blooded terrorists. Let me ask Kostas. Kostas, do you support the Greek court's decision to give asylum to those that Turkey calls terrorists and wants back home to face trial? Well, I mean, it's not for me to support or criticize. I think that it's uh, up to the courts to make that decision. And I think I share the prevailing view in Greek society that, uh, you know, that courts should be independent and that this is part of democracy as well. I mean, I share the view that I'm opposed to coups and uh, Greece has had a, you know, traumatic relationship, uh, you know, because of coups. But at the same time, at least as important for democracy is the rule of law and the idea mm -hmm. that uh, justice should be able to be independent of political pressures. I mean, uh, the courts made that decision, even though this issue is a hot potato for, right. you know, the Greek right. political system and Greek society, precisely because nobody wants a deterioration of relationships with Turkey. Let me ask Iris. Iris, yeah. the, f the Iris. fact that they were fleeing as the coup attempt was being thwarted and they took that helicopter and they went to Greece, for many in Turkey, it's evidence enough that they were clearly soldiers involved in the coup attempt, shouldn't that be taken into consideration? Um, that could be definitely uh, one uh, suggestion. The question is, as uh, my uh, colleague mentioned earlier on, when the process becomes uh, a legal process and there are specific applicable legal rules that the courts have to uh, apply, they are obliged to apply under international law, uh, <clears throat> there is a certain level of evidence that is required uh, before the court reaches a particular decision. Now, um, there is the, the context in which, and I totally um, uh, understand uh, to, to, to a large degree the, the, uh, the position of departure of, of the minister, uh, and I think the, the large majority of, of uh, not the majority, all people in Greece, uh, in fact, I was, uh, as the event were happening, I was in contact with uh, uh, friends and colleagues uh, in Turkey, trying to see whether they are okay or how things they are. And the, the response of the Turkish people against the coup was, was remarkable. Uh, having said that, what followed uh, was to, to a large degree, at least what has been reported, was and has been characterized uh, as a purge, both in the military and other sectors. Uh, now, one, and I think there is, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a Turkish um, proverb uh, that w we have a similar thing in Greek, which says that uh, next to the dry, the dam will be burnt as well, meaning that sometimes people that they are not necessarily involved with wrongdoing simply because of the fact that they're nearby. Okay. Certainly. Uh, and got the, got the problem. I have a question okay. for Aris. Okay, so, so when, when did they go to Greece and with what kind of transportation? Okay. I, I, I think, if I remember correctly, they, they were in, on the, in the night of the, of the coup, if I'm not wrong, uh, with a helicopter. It's a military with helicopter. With a military helicopter. So yes. they used 
a military helicopter which was used to attack people and be a part of the coup attempt. And then they escaped because they realized that their party had failed in achieving the coup. And they ran mm -hmm. away using a government helicopter. My question is, why did Greece return the helicopter mm -hmm. the next day? Because it belonged to Turkish government, right? Absolutely. And, and I don't know what kind they, of military helicopter they, it was. That. Why didn't they also extradite the contents of the helicopter the next day? Realistically, By content, these you mean are the, the people? military, Turkish military, in Turkish military uniforms, who have attempted a coup, they should have been extradited immediately along with the helicopter that they stole to run, to escape to Greece. It's that simple. Is it that simple to you, yeah. Iris? Uh, it, it's not that simple for two reasons. First of all, the, uh, and the minister is, uh, is much more informed than I am, of course, uh, the, the military helicopter that, uh, with uh, the one that the eight officers, Turkish officers, fled to Greece, uh, I'm not sure that uh, to what extent it was a, a military helicopter uh, for transport, transport purposes, whether it was a, a military heli helicopter with the guns that could be used in the type of operation that the minister said. It seems, if I'm not wrong, it was a transport helicopter. Uh, but even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't, the fact that eight uh, members of the Turkish army uh, fled and let us assume, for the sake of the argument, that they were, th th there was clear evidence that they have been involved uh, in, the, in the coup itself. And there is clear evidence that they, sort of smoking gun type of evidence, that they have been involved. Under international law, they can still uh, uh, ask, once they fled to, to, to Greece, to, uh, for, for Greece not to um, uh, extradite them if they fear <coughs> under article, particularly Article 3 of the European Convention of Human Rights, that if they return back home, they will be subject to um, uh, inhuman sort of uh, okay. type of So, uh, Aris, of, let, of me ask you, well, let me ask you directly, hold on, hold on, Egemen, just for a second. Just a, Aris, let me ask you very directly something, and then I'll get a response from Egemen. Do you believe sure. that they will be subject to inhuman or inhumane treatment? Do you believe that they won't yeah. get a fair trial? Uh, there are there are two different things there. The the fair trial is an Article Six of the European Convention on Human Rights issue, uh, and there is the Article Three that I mentioned, the right. inhumane in treatment. Okay. Uh, the I, I the the only thing, and I'm not in a position to make that call, but uh, I, we, we saw soon after, and I don't know if the situation had changed. I mean, it's it's up to the particularly the the, the, the government in Turkey to, to provide evidence to the contrary. But soon after, the first days uh, or the, 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 the day after the attempted the failed coup, uh, where um, uh, higher echelon uh, officers they they have been rounded up and they have been arrested by the uh, by by the military by the security forces in Turkey. Okay. Okay. We have seen videos being leaked that showed that they surely have been uh, treated not okay. uh, in accordance okay. with the standards okay, of so Article 3. This so is the only thing that fair I know. Fair enough. Okay, so let's bring in Egemen Baj. Article 3 and Article 6. Inhumane treatment and not getting a fair trial. Question marks over that from the Greek perspective. That's why they don't want to send these guys back. First of all, Turkey is a member of North Atlantic Treaty Organization, just like Greece. Mm -hmm. So our military officers have responsibilities to work together and to protect each other. But when military officers of one ally starts killing innocent people, civilian people, and then uses a military helicopter, a government property, mm -hmm. to escape to another NATO ally, it is the responsibility of that ally to say, what the hell are you doing here? And extradite them immediately. Coming to inhumane treatment issue, None of the Gulenists, although they deserve to be treated inhumanely, if you ask me, but they have been treated humanly because Turkey is a country of state of law. Turkey is a member of Council of Europe. Turkey is an aspiring candidate country for European Union. Capital punishment has been banned in this country right. since uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Everybody is treated humanly. What he is referring to some videos is the civilian people who saved their own lives 
caught these people and disarmed them, took their uniforms away, and then handed them over to the police for prosecution. That happened the night of the coup. Okay. And these guys were running away from Turkey after having killed 251 right. civilian individuals. But we can't be certain that these guys in particular, these eight, were involved in killing, can we? We are in a way certain because why did they escape that night? Right. If they had nothing to do with the coup attempt... But you would be open to that had, being they, answered in a court of law if they come back. Of course. Yes. Everyone is questioned in a court of law. Right. From the four-star general to the private Got it. that was serving under instructions that night. Okay. Everyone gets a free trial. Everyone gets to state their right. defense. And everyone is entitled to attorneys. I want to broaden this out a little bit because there's a bit of tit for tat when it comes to the actions in recent times as well. And let me ask you, Costas, because we've seen uh, everything from diplomatic war of words to hackers on both sides, hacking government ministries and, and taking down different websites and so forth. Help me understand, Kostas, how Greeks see the situation of the two Greek soldiers that are in Turkey right now and whether the Greeks see them as sort of bargaining chips when it comes to this case of these eight. Well, uh it was interesting listening to the minister about uh, making the argument that both countries are NATO allies, because that's precisely the argument that Greeks are using in the case of, uh, of uh, the Greek soldiers. And the argument from the point of view of Greeks, this kind of instances of uh, Greek uh, soldiers going to Turkish territory by mistake and Turkish soldiers going to the Greek territory by mistake, was something that had happened for a long time. And um, the reason in this particular instance, this case has escalated and these soldiers, instead of just routinely being returned within the day, like it used to happen, uh, and you have the central government be involved in that kind of way, and the, there is a court process, and these soldiers are still uh, detained after weeks, uh, is uh, is viewed in precisely the same uh, the same way. So, uh, so I think uh, the view from uh, from the Greek uh, uh, side is not that uh, Greece is not um, you know performing the way NATO NATO ally would sort of uh, perform. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, 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 hold, so uh, let, me, let me bring in Egerman Baish here. Egerman, So the Greeks feel. There's an honest mistake from two Greek soldiers crossing over into Turkish territory. I mean, many of the islands, for example, it's hard to tell where the border is, right? They cross over. It happens all the time. But because of the current political system, oh, uh, uh, sorry, current political tensions, especially vis-a-vis -vis the eight that Greece don't want to extradite, Turkey is using these two as a bargaining chip. Does Turkey do that? Well, first of all, let me make sure that our other guests understand that my view is not an anti-Greek view, or right. I have nothing against the Greek people or the Greek authorities, because as a matter of fact, the night of the coup, the first European leader to call me personally and ask me if President Erdogan was okay, was the Greek commissioner to European Union, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dimitri Avramopoulos. And he personally called on many European leaders, including the president of the council, to take a stand in favor of democracy and he personally came to Turkey right afterwards to share our sorrow. So I know that Greeks by far are our neighbors, are our allies and they have good intentions for Turkey. But in this case, the two Greek soldiers that entered the Turkish soil, knowingly or by mistake, that's, the for, that's for the court to decide, they are accused of espionage mm -hmm. because the phones that they had on their possession had pictures of some of the Turkish military sites. So they not only entered Turkey, they, they took some pictures of some classified areas of Turkey, some secret military uh, areas of Turkey, and now they are being questioned for uh, espionage for but Turkey has not granted them any asylum. Right. Okay. That's so, the difference. So uh, let me let I me mean, then ask if, Harris. If the yeah. Greek authorities, right. if the Greek courts feel that those eight Turkish soldiers 
were there spying on them, right. then they should be prosecuted. Okay, so but let if me ask not, that. if so they are there because they escaped the coup attempt that they failed achieving, mm. then they should be extradited so, for so prosecution to Turkey. Aris, just as you want Turkey to respect the Greek courts, and of course the Greek government to respect the Greek courts and their decisions, do you respect Turkish courts when it comes to the case of the two Greek soldiers? Uh, one has to abide by the principles of the rule of law but if they are respected and applied in a specific country. I don't have at the moment um, any um, obvious um, concern uh, with regards to, to the process. The only concern that I have is that, and the minister will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the, the two Greek soldiers have been in custody in the Turkish uh, high security prisons in Idirne, but actually they, they have not been any charges against them. Of course, that is allowed. This long period of detention without charge is allowed unless, if I'm not wrong, under the Turkish legislation, whether this complies with the standards of the European uh, uh, Convention of Human Rights, we will soon find out because I think if the process continues like that, I would not rule out some type of, uh, of, of, of a case before the European Court of Human Rights. And to, 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 to finish my sort of answer to this, it would be the first time, I think, in human history where espionage will be carried out in full military uniform with all the insignia, the military insignia. Right. I haven't heard of that espionage attempt anywhere before. Good point, well, right, Aris, right Egerman? Uh, why, would remember, they, normally, why would they do it as soldiers? Normally, right. if Greek soldiers walk into Turkish areas, they would be returned uh, immediately right. because, as it was yeah. said, by Kostas, sometimes they actually lose sight of right. the border and they walk into the wrong side. And this happens Correct. on both sides. Both Turkish soldiers mm -hmm. sometimes enter the Greek properties, Greek soil, and sometimes Greek soldiers enter the Turkish. The fact that they were detained this time is because of their activities that took suspicion and the contents of their for those phones. Greek people That's who what I read from the media. Okay, but for those Greek people who believe that it has something to do with the suspected FETO soldiers, would you pour cold water over that and say it has nothing to do with it? Well, I don't know the contents of both cases. I don't know right. the details, but... For those who say the Turkish government is just using that, them as bargaining No, chips. no, no, that would not make sense. I mean, Turkey and Greece have a lot to share. We are neighbors, yeah. we have, uh, there are so much that unite us than divide us. Can I mean, we, can we get out of this tangle me, diplomatically? This can was said to me by f uh, Mayor of Salonika once. He had said that in EU, we are partners with countries like Denmark or Sweden, but with you, we're cousins and you don't get to choose your cousins. That's we right. have the same culture, same music, mm -hmm. same uh, attitude. Food. Food, Some of the food. exactly. So uh, I am sure in the long run, we will solve our differences. Is it going to be easy to get out of this tangle because it's a big tangle? It, it, it shouldn't be that difficult because common sense has to prevail. Unfortunately, what really poured fuel to the fire was Prime Minister of Greece told our Prime Minister the day after these terrorists entered Greece, they would be extradited immediately. Right. And unfortunately, the courts took a totally different attitude. And Independent it courts sometimes though. feels like forces outside of Greece were involved. But isn't it an example that they have independent courts and the government can't touch them? Maybe some other governments are touching them. Really? You suspect that? Okay, gentlemen. That's my right. feeling. Okay, we're out of time. But it's been a pleasure having this conversation. I think it was an important conversation to have Egemen Baish, Kostas Panayotakis, and Aris Georgiopoulos. Thank you very much for joining us here on the Newsmakers.